In this video, we are going to be looking at the top 10 things for you to consider doing to your low C drag car before you ever even do the first run with it. Welcome to the channel. My name is Troy. If you're first time here, welcome. We do all this stuff from racing to bashing, crawling, drifting, how-to videos, product reviews, all that kind of stuff, right? And today, literally one of the better looking cars I have ever owned, this Losi 22S no prep drag car. Now I've been driving this car for, I don't know, a few days now. And there's a few things that I kind of wish I had done straight out of the box that um, I learned either from the message forums or I've learned now personal experience that I think you would probably benefit from doing before you ever even uh, turn the first wheel, do the first burnout with this car. So I categorize them down into 10 things. And so let's go through them and show you what my thoughts are. Item number one on our checklist is checking your slipper clutch settings. These are very important in a drag car. I was actually really surprised to see that it was so loose. Like it was all the way out here at the very, very end. Um, but that's a very stiff spring that they provide in here. So what I did is I actually uh, turned this all the way in and realized that mine set from the factory was exactly six turns from all the way compressed. So all the way compressed backed off six turns. My initial runs have shown that that's probably slightly tight and it could benefit from an you know, a quarter or maybe up to a half being backed off, but that's been my personal opinion. So, but just check to see where it is. Cause man, the slipper settings on these drag cars is so important. You want to know where yours is set so that you have that baseline when you go out and do your first runs. The second one, while you have your wheels off doing the slipper clutch is to check the glue on the inside of the beads. And what you'll see is um, mine are actually in pretty decent shape, but if you try to pull Pull this back you will see a couple places where it looks like it's kind of trying to separate a little bit more than the others um, i've seen some other folks who have actually had concerns with uh whole sections of their bead that look like they've been trying to pull off mine i checked both of mine on both sides i was actually in pretty decent shape um, when you get that the tire won't be as round as it's spinning down the street because one of these sizes will be able to balloon up more than the other you'll get some wobble it'll provide some instability for you so while you have them off it takes three and a half seconds to check and to pop some more glue on there if needed okay and again while you're here with all this off you take this gear cover that came with it and you put it aside because as it turns out i don't know if this is standard with the low c22 or if it's just with this drag car setup i'm actually wearing when the compression when the suspension fully compresses it's actually hitting this uh, CVD, this drive shaft is actually hitting on this gear cover and I have a little bit of a wear. I mean, I've, I've not driven this truck, this vehicle too much, but I actually already have wear coming down on this gear cover right here. So I'm guessing in general, it's probably not a huge deal, but I tend to not run the gear covers on my vehicles, on my drag cars anyway. So this is definitely going away. So I don't have to worry about that interfering with it. It's never gonna compress enough to actually hit the, uh, the spur gear. So I don't have to worry about that piece of it. All right, now I'm gonna preface item number five here with saying maybe this is not one that you do right before you first ever drive the vehicle, but maybe something that you end up doing later. But it is slotting these motor mounts. So I'm bringing it up because all this stuff is already off. And what I've done here is I have taken my, uh, I have this handy dandy tack life rotary tool you can use the one of your choice but i will include this rtd 03 vc it's a rechargeable uh rotary tool i just take this and very quickly very simply open up both of these holes for the motor mount to allow me to get an even even bigger pinion in there than what the factory allows and then the other piece with it that you can do at that time is um inside this where the motor mounts there's actually a supporting rib in here and i'm going to provide you some kind of closer up photos here there's a supporting rib in here that as you try to move the motor back it will hit and so again i took that same rotary tool and just took a bunch of that supporting rib out now i'm going to guess that the fine engineers at losi didn't put that in there just because they thought it looked cool i'm guessing that was there for some level of structural rigidity so 
check out the published date on this video come back six months from now and ask me if i really really regretted removing that support rib um, because like that piece cracked but honestly i can't really imagine the only thing that really the forces that are going through that is from the wheelie bar so unless i really really hit that wheelie bar like ridiculously hard probably in a crash would be my guess is the only place that it would actually truly break tip number five right as we go through this so we're halfway through is to check your wheelie bar my wheelie bar straight out of the box was super tweaked i don't know if my box got dropped i don't know what the deal was but my wheelie bar had a big old tweak to it and the easy way to test that is one finger directly under the middle of the front bumper as you pick it up it sets on those wheelie bars and then both rear tires should come off the ground at the exact same time I don't know if you can really see that on the camera, but they are coming off at the exact same time right now, right? That means that that wheelie bar is square to those rear tires. I'm very, very happy with that. All right. And, uh, but what happened initially was when I would lift up there, one of the tires would come off drastically earlier than the other one. So I had to tweak that wheelie bar, which it's soft enough plastic. You can literally just bend it and it kind of holds, um, bend that wheelie bar back a little bit so that those wheels came off there. And then you probably have a better chance of launching straight. Okay. Item number six is actually on my to-do list today. As it turns out, I haven't even done it yet, but, um, check the shocks because what I've noticed here, if you can listen real quiet, literally, literally every single one of my shocks sounds like it has a whole bunch of oil in it. So I don't know if these shocks are just pretty pitiful. And so that's just going to be part of a fact of life with these, or if we're going to have to, and we're just going to have to upgrade them period, or if it is just that they came low and they need to be bled appropriately out of the top here. But, uh, every single one of them you can hear has oil in them. So I'm going to be taking these caps off. I'm going to be making sure that they are super full of oil and bleeding out any air that I can get out of them to make sure that I have that repeatable, uh, smooth motion with my shocks. The next items are all about this ridiculously gorgeous body that comes with this vehicle. So it looks awesome and it really, it really, really is. But there's a couple things that I had with the factory setting straight out of the box that I was not happy with. All right, so the first thing that I did was I taped the body on all four corners right near where the tires were. And my DR10 team associated, I tended to wear the paint off right here. So when the body when the front compressed down, the tires would actually hit and they would rub the paint off. I have not seen that on the front of this car. It seems like the tires are spaced in appropriately to where that's not an issue. However, on the rear, um, even in my first just couple runs, I burnt through the piece of duct tape and actually started to burn into the paint on the body. And I mean, and that was literally like four runs and it went through. So the body was way, way down low. So one, tape your body and just a couple of those four pieces of tape on there. Yes, it's a small amount of uh, extra weight. Probably doesn't really matter. Now, if you don't care how good your body looks, then you can just skip that one, right? But the other piece with this is setting the body height. And so the rear, I have left, the front, sorry, I have left completely alone. It has been fine. The rear, I've actually moved up, I think it's two holes at this point. So now what you can see is I have one full and just a partial hole peeking out. All right, one full and then just that partial hole peeking out that has raised up the rear of the body just slightly. So with that height, with the stock tires, it'll still barely rub. You can actually see, um, especially this is the left rear, you can actually still see some marks on there. It's still rubbing a little bit, but I'm hoping that um, I'm quickly going to be changing away from these stock tires. I have some Proline belted reactions and some tires like that that I'm going to try. And if they balloon just that little bit less than these that are not belted, then we'll probably be in good shape. But, you know, hey, part of that's aesthetics. 
part of that's also power, right? I mean, you don't want your car dragging on anything and dragging on the body is slowing that wheel down just a little bit if anything else. If like mine, it's dragging on one side, not the other, it's probably doing a little bit of steering to your car too, right? So that's not good. So check that at the very beginning. I would recommend definitely, if nothing else, raising up the body height by that um, to where you only have one, just a little bit more than one hole sticking out and putting a couple pieces of tape on that body. Item number eight is also related to the rear of the body. So you can see here, I actually have rubber scuff marks right behind both rear tires. And I don't even know how I have that much scuff mark. I don't even know how that's possible, but you can clearly tell that that tire has been hitting this body right here. You can actually, there's like fuzz and everything coming off of it. So again, similar to this, one of my jobs that I'm going to do here today is I'm going to look at, can I, can I bring some of this bumper back? Now, the other thing that I've been debating recently is per the 13 and a half turn or per the street outlaws rules, I have to have a rear bumper and it does it has a clearly molded rear bumper the rules don't say that i have to have all the body work underneath the bumper just that i have to have a rear bumper and so this whole thing i mean look at the design of this it's literally a parachute it's a really good looking parachute but it's literally a parachute that you're dragging down the track so i'm going to investigate can i actually come in here and cut in through here and actually remove all of this and it'll do a couple things as it turns out one it'll reduce that whole parachute effect two it'll stop those tires from rubbing on it as they balloon up and then three um, it'll make the body easier to get on because as of right now with how these body mounts stick out you actually have to pull the body back here and you have to curl the body in underneath there so it just uh, it'll make life easier too so i'm all about making life easier so that i believe that is also on my to-do list for today is to do that piece. item number nine is change your connectors if you are running a different connector than what the esc will come with from the stock factory then you want to change it yes it's xt90 lots of people hate on me for the xt90s it's what i run so whether you're running something different bullets whatever it is change that out so that it mounts to your battery and um, it's in general if you can shorten these wires at all that's also helpful so you can see i shortened mine all the way right up to that capacitor item number 10 is all about this bad boy right here the gnss performance analyzer you know you need one you know you're going to need it you know if you don't if you're doing rc drag racing and you don't have one of these you need to stop right now go buy one and come back right? Like, like that's what you need to do. That is, that is how this is. That's how this thing works. So, uh, where to mount it though? Because honestly, there's not a lot of really good places. It will actually fit here. So if you're going to double side tape, it literally fits right behind the servo and in front of the battery. I mean, it's like they literally designed it that way. So maybe you want to double side tape it because I mean, if you're like me, I move it from car to car. So you can double side um, tape it or Velcro, um, Velcro it right there. And then it is works beautifully nice and low in your chassis. I've seen some people try to work it into up here. That's not a bad idea. Also, that is definitely something that you could try to do. You could try to mount it up here. I found that with some um with just some simple velcro strap i can actually mount mine directly on top of the battery right there it's kind of rearward um, it is up a little bit higher but it is rearward and it works just like a champ and then i'm going to give you a bonus 11th final tip hopefully you have already done this if you have bought this car you're going to want to go faster with it right and so you're going to run it stock for just a little bit and then you're going to immediately think like "Ooh, what can i do to make it go faster you need a set of pinions all right so i'll provide a link down below as to a couple pinions that i've already seen a lot of folks be very successful with you know you can get these you can get these group packages like these off of amazon for pretty dang cheap where you can um, get a series of pinions and different teeth that are right next to each other that way you can fine tune that pinion setting that you have in your car right and so you know you're going to do that so when you're ordering the car i hope you've already like i did hope you already went ahead and just clicked that buy button and got a couple more pinions on their way so i'll provide a link to those down below all right so that was our 10 plus a bonus one 11 total tips 
for doing this first. The first thing you ever do when you get your low C drag car before you go out, you can see, especially like stuff with the body, I've learned a couple lessons the hard way. Um, you know, there's still a couple things obviously that I'm recommending that I still need to go do, like which I'm, it's on my to-do list today, which is rebuilding those shocks and cutting that body, some of those kind of things. If you're just getting it, please consider some of these things that I just suggested before you get out there. Um, if you're already a Lucy owner or you're already out there and you have, if I've missed something, do I have something in here that um, I've, I've missed something? Hey, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to build this out and have some other tips and tricks. You provide something, I'll might pin the comment and stuff so other folks can see it. So, hey, I really appreciate your support. Let me know if this video is valuable down below and uh, I will see you next time. So thank you. While I'm out still doing these last couple of modifications on my car, come over here, check out some of the other stuff. We have that first run video that we did with this. How fast did it go right out of the box? How could I get it going down my street at least? How fast could I get it to go? Come over here, check that out. Check out some other videos that we have going on and I will see you next time. So thank you and goodbye.